Yes, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video here on Unclear with me, Seamus Brady, your host. And for this one, I am joined by Matthew Hurley, the Gaelic stats man, and Aaron, but the man behind Gaelic Games Fan TV. We are going to do what is the end of year review for 2023, the end of year show. And this time, I'm putting Matthew and Aaron against each other under the spotlight for the quiz. Aaron's usually the man who's hosting the quiz, putting me and Matthew against each other. We'll see, Aaron, how you get on. Matthew, of course, beat me last time. So you're up against the reigning, defending, undisputed champion of the GA quizzes. And uh, yeah, before we go, we have a lovely message here from Denise. It says, hello, Seamus, Matthew and Aaron. Haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you all had a great Christmas. Thanks very much. Same goes for that. Lads, how was the Christmas, Matthew? I'll go to you first. Any good gifts? Yeah, thanks for having me on again, Seamus. Yeah, coincidentally, we were talking about Christmas gifts in um in, in Aaron's video, um Best uh, Gaelic Games Gifts, and you actually mentioned a couple of books. One of them was written by Humphrey Keller. I mm -hmm. got that gift from my mother. That yeah. was no, that was a brilliant, brilliant uh, gift, I have to say. Just some very good photos in it. Uh, very good historic uh, bits in it. Like even even the fact in Connacht, there's the amount of 1960 leaders, their stadiums are named after. It's just incredible to hear. And um, yeah, some stadiums I recognise up and down the country got a car track as well for next season. So all ready to go for the Allianz League uh, next January. And um, yeah, some good dinner, um, some good food, some good TV. Yeah, can't complain about this Christmas, to be honest with you. And good family time rather than watching matches. So um, yeah, absolutely brilliant Christmas. And I hope uh, both of you had a, a good Christmas too. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Aaron, how was the Christmas for yourself? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, I was out, as I was saying to you off air, it was out a uh, good couple of nights between last Thursday and today. Just a lot, a lot of different things on. And then, yeah, I actually got a, a Dublin jumper uh, as well. So we're talking about GEA gifts and everything. So that might come in might come in handy going into going into the new year. I mean, like it would be still be very cold around January, February. So maybe around championship season, that's when... A little jumper like that might come in, uh, come in handy. But yeah, no, I'm gonna rest and recuperate next now for the next few days. So looking forward to it, and yeah, looking forward to the quiz to test my knowledge. Let's see, yeah, uh, let's see how we get on. No, well, that's it. No, and Denise is buzzing to see as well what 2024 has in store for us in terms of the GA. Definitely, I mean, <laughs> I could be an interesting one. I know we're gonna do loads of videos and stuff on what is to come and what could improve over the next year, different changes that we make. But this one is just going to be a bit of a laugh and we're going to see how much the lads know their stuff. So, lads, what we're going to do is we're going to do a few rounds. The first round is going to be general knowledge. First round is just going to be, I'm going to go one by one. So I'm going to go Aaron first, then Matthew. I've got two easy questions that you should get, two medium questions, which and two hard ones that I'd be pretty impressed if you got the answer to them. Moving on from then, what I have is I have know your county. So know your county's season. I'm going to ask you a couple of quick fire questions about your county season. If you can name them, you get a point for each one. Then after that, we have the quote, who said it. So I'm going to have two written down quotes for each of you. I'm going to read them out with no emotion and you're going to tell me exactly who said them. If you can tell me when they said them, that's even more impressive. And then the final round is the debate room. So you're going to try and convince me of something that is absolutely nonsense. So you're going to try and tell me that... I don't know. You're going to try and tell me that Chris O'Dowd was the best minor footballer of all time, but he just jacked it in to go play, to go do comedy instead. Or something along those lines. And then the person who convinces me better than the other one that that might actually be true will get the point for that one as well. But anyway, when it comes to starting it off, I have coin in my pocket. We have indeed the good two euro coin in my pocket. So I'll go to Machu because you are immediately on my right on the screen as I'm looking at it or <laughs> whatever way you're looking at it here. Um, Matthew, heads or tails? Go, go, heads. Heads, okay. And the big reveal. That's good. <laughs> good start. Drop the coin. Remember there I go again. And it is tails. So the first one up is Aaron. 
And by the way, what I am going to do in this one is I'm going to offer you the chance to steal it. So if Aaron doesn't get it, the match you know the answer, I'll give you the opportunity to steal the point. Okay. So double whammy, if you don't get it, it's very likely that the other person might know it. It's unlikely that these questions will be unknown by both of you. So Aaron, we'll go easy questions first. Aaron, then Matthew, then medium questions. Aaron, then Matthew, then the hard questions. Aaron, Matthew. So round one. Aaron, who is the top scorer from the All-Ireland Football Championship 2023? Shane McGuigan. Correct. Who was the Cork Camogie captain in 2023? That's me, is it? Um... It's Aaron still. Okay. And you can say he doesn't get it. Is that Amy O'Connor? Correct. Two out of two on the easy ones. Over to Matthew now for your easy questions. We'll see how they go. Your first question is, who was the top scorer in the All-Ireland Hurling Championship of 2023? TJ Reid. Correct. Who was Dublin's women's football captain in 2023? Carter Correct. So the easy one's down, four up, four down. It's a good start for the lads. Medium questions now. Aaron, I'll come to you first. Who scored the freak own goal in the Talton Cup final of 2023? The one that came back off the post. Ooh. That's, an inter- that, that's an interesting one. All right, it was... I've no idea. I I'll give you one hint each. Well, Matthew, do you know? I know, yeah. Can I, can I say it? Yeah, Matthew can steal. Uh, Pat Haven. Correct. Pat Haven was who the ball went in off in that Tottenham Cup final. Changed the game. That did. No question about it. Down oh, that, was, that, was it. that was literally the only down player I could think of off the top of my head as well. Because I was like, I've no idea who that is. Only player I could think of was Pat <laughs> Haven. It came into my head and I was like, I'm not just gonna say. Oh, I was thinking it was a. You have to movie. listen. You have to listen to those voices in your head. Sometimes you have no, to. Li- no. Sometimes they know what's what. Shocking. <laughs> Aaron, your second medium question is: Who scored the final point of the All Ireland Football Championship this year? The last point. Who scored it? Dean Rock. Dean Rock, correct. Matthew, what team did Stephen Cluxton first appear against in the year of 2023? Not play. What was the game that he first emerged back at the Dublin panel? Loud. Loud, correct. Niall Morgan made headlines this year when he appeared in a football match in goal. What was the name of the team he played for? Dungan and Swiss. Very good. Two out of two on those ones. Now, Aaron, the hard questions. Bring it on. Here we go. Who was the unfortunate man to mark Aaron Galan in the Munster Hurling final of 2023? The unfortunate man. I remember, yeah, because he was a young player and he got, and everyone was going mad about it on social media. Hmm. See, yeah. Evan something. No, I don't know. No idea. No idea. Not a good idea to do this after about six days of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Um, Matthew, do you want to steal that one? Yeah. Uh, Keen Nolan. That is correct. So, Matthew. So, so far, Matthew got both of his easy questions, both of his hard, medium questions, and took one of Aaron's. And now has taken Aaron's hard, first hard question. Aaron, your second hard question is a fairly hard question, in a sense. So, in the All-Ireland Camogie final of this year, 
one Waterford player went off injured early. And a lot of people think that definitely contributed to Waterford having a bad game. It's a very important defender. I have no idea with this one. I'll be honest. This is the the hard L questions. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I could barely remember. I could barely even remember a substitute from the like the the football final, which it was at. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. No, I'm blank. Blank. Matthew, do you want to have a crack at that one? Yeah, uh, Vicky Falconer. Vicky Falconer is correct. Vicky Falconer go. is absolutely correct. Well, I don't think Matthew's got one wrong yet. <laughs> Matthew has not got one wrong yet. Yeah, you <laughs> see now, be... you have the hard questions. This, could be this, a one, this one is a very hard question. I'll be very impressed if he gets this one. So, Owen Murphy made an amazing save in the All-Ireland Hurling semi-final against Clare. But who took the shot that he saved? Shot at the dark here. I'm going to go Peter Duggan. That is unbelievable. Correct. Peter Duggan hit the volley and Owen Murphy flicked it up. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Aaron, I am very happy that I am in the presenter position. <laughs> Because I am also off the back of a few days of drinking, so my brain yeah. isn't exactly firing on all cin- cylinders here either. Okay, so final hard question for Matthew. During the crazy last minute of the Leinster hurling final, one player lost his hurl and kicked the ball straight out in a panic to Killian Buckley. Who was that player? Port Mannion. Not even a blink. Mate, <laughs> not even a blink. I just ask him something that I've not looked up now at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First, the answers. So, now, we'll move on to the quotes part of the show. And these ones, because there is only, well, two of them each, you get three points for getting a correct one. So, just might be a chance of redemption here. This is a chance of redemption. <laughs> so, for this one, we'll go Matthew first, Aaron second. So, Matthew, this is the quote. Funny enough, I suppose you spoke about going with croaks from day one. Funnily enough, I went with Bally Bowden from day one pretty much, mainly just because I had that sense that croaks would be more vulnerable this year. I thought Bally Bowden would be the team to ruffle their feathers the way Rahini did. It's weird because Bally Bowden have been so good and Kilma could have been so vulnerable. You would think I'd be more confident in that prediction, but actually I'm not because of the fact that Croaks are still here. I'm going to say it's Aaron. That is correct. Aaron said that in the Dublin football final preview for 2023. Now, so that's three points there for Matthew. Aaron, your next one. They're not putting themselves in the good books, let's put it that way, by trying to meddle in who referees the game. Honestly, you're reminding me of, remember when you were a young lad and you were playing football with your mates and there was always that kid that took the football back when he wasn't winning. Kilku kind of showing that behavior, being like, no, no, it's my ball, I paid for it. He's not refereeing the game. Grow up, the ref is the ref. The assigned referee should have refereed that game. This is, it can only be me or Matthew for this, is it? No, no. It can be anyone else? Anybody. Anybody. Mm. Who said that? I think you said that. Yeah, I did. (laughs) True true question. (laughs) So I'm saying, if you didn't get that, because I was kind of getting, I was kind of getting, yeah, I was kind of getting, I was kind of getting a deja vu of you saying saying it as well. I was like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've heard this before, definitely, definitely. So, yeah. Okay. Now, next one is to. Next one is to Matthew again. So this one here is. 
you know what? Fair play to Monaghan. Fair play to them. Defensively, they were well organised today. But Armagh, third time they've lost again. They must be feeling sick. That was me, was it? <laughs> straight in. I think I remember that because I always used today in a quote and then as soon as that it was said I just knew yeah it's me yeah okay so Aaron your next one were they happy to be in the Talton Cup you're asking me what I said. First of all, we're here to talk about one of the best hurling days that we have in hurling. You can listen to me every Friday after seven if you want. Don Logue. Don Logue, Hudak. Correct. Yeah. Very good, lads. The next one here is a buzzer. So if you can tell me when this was said. So this was, a, this was said immediately after... The climax of one of the most dramatic games of the year. If you can tell me who said it, that's three points. When it was said, another three points. So a six-point swing here. So, yeah, I suppose the age-old saying, the game is never over till the final whistle. We had two or three chances to clear it, and I suppose that's the way it goes. We'll dust ourselves down and go back to the drawing board. I'm going to say Jack O'Connor after the other and final. Nope. No. Uh-oh. Was it him? Was it Henry Shefflin after the Leinster final? Oh, you're so close! You got one of them. I give you. I give you three points. That was Connor Whelan. After oh, the God. Final. So that was just when he had been asked <laughs> when they decided to interview him after probably the worst moment of his life. So, wow. yeah, not great. So you both nailed that. You both got your things. And so for that, Aaron, you got six in that round combined with the three that you got from the first round. You're on nine. Matthew is on 15 points. So there's six in it from the first round. He's equal tied in that one as well. Matthew came so close to scooping up the extra three for the, the hurling one. Thank God. Now, yeah. <laughs> complete landslide here. <laughs> now, next round. So after the who said it round, next round is to know your own county. So this one is actually very much impressive, and there's five points going on this. So, and it's a very very difficult one to do. But what I'm going to do is. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to step by step walk me through Dublin's championship route in 2023. And Matthew, you run me through Cork's championship route in 2023. If you can successfully go from start to finish and who they lost to, who they beat, you get all five points. So, as we started with Aaron in the first round, we'll start with Aaron again in this round. Aaron, can you spell out from day one of the championship who Dublin played until the final? Yeah, so first first game up in Leinster, they played Leash. That was the Leinster quarterfinals. Quarterfinal. They obviously beat them. Then they played Kildare in the semifinals, beat them as well. Played Loud in the, in the Leinster final, beat them as well. Group stages, it was so it was. Oh, which one was first? Roscommon or Kildare? Who? This I'm is tricky. Say, yeah, I'm gonna say. I think it was Roscommon first. Correct. No, Roscommon first, then Kildare, then Sligo, then quarterfinals, Mayo, then beat Monaghan, and then beat Kerry in the final. Very good. Very impressed. Is That is a significant amount of games to remember there. So that's an extra five on to Aaron's tally. Matthew, can you run me through the Cork Men's Football Championship run of 2023? 
Yeah, so uh, the Munster quarterfinal, they played Clare in the Clusive Park in Ennis, lost that, went to the group stages of the All-Ireland, played against Loud and Park Talton, beat them by two points. Um, then were Parky Heave against Kerry, lost to them, uh, beat Mayo in the Gaelic rounds in Limerick. That was the end of the group stages, went into the preliminary quarterfinal against Ross Common and Parky Heave, beat them, and then lost to Derry in Crow Park in the All-Ireland quarterfinals. Very impressed. Very impressive. You see, if anybody ever tells us that we don't know our shit. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Listen to that. Ran through the entire championship in one go. Okay. So then this is the last part of the quiz. And then I'll just ask you to pick out a few of your kind of favorite things from 2023. So the first one I'm going to ask you to do. The first opinion, and the hard opinion, and I am stewing on this now, the one that I want you to tell me, and I'm keeping it county-based. I'm keeping it county-related. So, first one. Aaron, you are to try and convince me why Dublin should challenge Kildare to play their home games in Cullen Park next year instead of renting out Croke Park. So you tell me why that's a good idea. And Matthew, you are to try and convince me why Cork should do everything they can to get as many Bruce Springsteen and Ed Sheeran concerts into Porky Cueve <laughs> for the next two or three years. And whoever which one I'm more convinced by will get the point. And, ju- and Matthew, just to clarify, it was Kildare going to... Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. Instead of Crow Park. Which is why my brain went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, okay, okay. Lads, whichever one of you wants to go first. I'm not particularly fussed this time. Yeah, I can go first. I don't mind. Okay. Stage is yours. Why should Dublin play their home games in Cullen Park next year? So it's Dublin, not Kildare. Yeah, why should Dublin oh. Oh, play Dublin. there with Kildare? With Kildare, okay. Right. Well, I, I think I think the main reason why Dublin, Dublin and Kildare should play in Cullen Park is because Dublin and Kildare typically have always played in very similar stadiums. They've always played in Crow Park, and I think going to to Netwatch Cullen Park, obviously that's going to be where Kildare are playing their games, and Kildare needs to get more familiar with with Dublin and Dublin style of play because they're obviously playing Dublin on a regular basis year in, year out. So, like, if Dublin are playing in Crow Park and Kildare are playing in Cullen Park, then that gap for, you know, widens further. So I think Dublin playing in in Cullen Park, in theory, would improve Kildare. It would help them get more up to speed. And in theory, it would also help Dublin because two teams, you know, playing in the the same pitch a lot of the time, you know, learning each other's standards and everything else. I think it would be great for the supporters as well. A great day out for Dublin fans. You know, we get to go up to to Carlo, get out, get out of Crow Park. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a great occasion. I mean, the nightclubs in Carlo are pretty good. Been to the Foundry before, <laughs> great place. Um, good little spot. So I think it'd be great, you know. And I think we're all this fuss about everyone trying to take Dublin out of Crow Park. I think, yeah, bring us to to Netwatch Cullen Park. Let's make that our home. And then once Dublin start winning all Ireland's and Leinster titles in you know a stadium with about six thousand people, then do you know, we can we can we can show that we well and truly are the best, and yeah, that's why we go for uh, Netwatch Cullen Park for Dublin twenty twenty four. Let's make it happen. <laughs> well said, I'm impressed, Matthew. Obviously, I know the way that you absolutely love all the concerts that Porky Creeve hosts. Can just just for clarity, actually, just for clarity, actually, Seamus. Um, if I convince the people to have rugby matches in Crow Park because there's a monster game next year, can I do that as well? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Why should we go 2007 2.0? Yeah, um, I think it, the main reason why uh, Cork J should let uh, concerts and rugby matches and soccer matches even to be played in Parky Heave is because Parky Heave needs the money. Um, it's probably well documented at the moment that Cork J is adept, as uh, Kevin O'Donovan has um, articulated on many podcasts in the past. 
And Cork Tree needs the money, simple as that. And we need to rent out Parky Heave to have these sorts of concerts. And what this will do actually for the music industry with uh, Ed Sheeran and Bruce Springsteen, even if the Eurovision Song Contest gets held in Parky Heave, it will, it will rise up uh, the music in the county and a lot of people will be interested in it. And a lot of people are interested in music, no matter, like, not many people in Cork, well, loads are interested in sport but not all people are interested in sport all people are interested in different genres of music so what harm would it be to have music at Parky Cave or even some uh, brilliant event and as well as that with rugby matches as well like Munster rugby can make it their home and potentially win a Champions Cup and eventually be Kings of Europe what would be wrong with that and Cork, Cork GA will be the centrepiece of uh, allowing Munster G, Munster Rugby, excuse me, to be at the top of the tree in European rugby, and it'll be absolutely brilliant. And as well as that, why should the Cork footballers and the hurlers play outside Parky Keith? The hurlers, maybe to make it difficult for the likes of Limerick to play in Parky Rain, a tighter pitch, and let's make it a battle against Limerick. Parky Rain is the best for facilities and all that, and let's make the Limerick fans uncomfortable in there. Same with Kerry. Let's make them uncomfortable going to Parky Rain. And what we could do with Kerry as well, bring them down to Bantry, bring them down to Oran in the back arts and nowhere in Cork and give them a game there and see what Kerry fans will feel like it, once that is the case. Because no doubt, Kerry, if they had the opportunity, would take Cork to Dingle. So why can't we take them down to Bantry? So I'm going to say it. Cork today should rent out Parky Keep to have music and all them events and rugby and stuff like that while the Cork footballers make it a battle against Kerry down to Bantry. Well, well, as I'm not going to lie, I'm very impressed with both of them. I feel like pretty bad that I have to choose one. Um, you see, what's, what's kind of stupid about me picking that is like I can actually see what match you said happening to some level, not the full way, but I can see Cork, like Cork stuffing as many concerts into Porky Creep as they possibly can over the next three years. And the money aspect is there. Dublin playing alongside Kildare would be hilarious, though. It would be, like, the funniest thing ever. It would be, like, the type of thing that would make no sense at all. Um, I'll give it to Aaron. I'll give it to Aaron, slightly. But uh, be, that's only because if you were to ask me at the start which one makes more sense, I would have said Cork to rent out Porky Creep as much as possible. Netwatch Cullen Park makes no sense. And yet when Aaron was saying that, I was a little bit like, ah. and then the nightclub part, I was like, all right, never mind. But <laughs> yeah. Pure stumbling. I was like, I mean, it makes absolute zero sense. I was actually thinking on the spot, like how can I make sense of it? And I don't know. Yeah. Here okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Next. So that's three points down for Aaron. Next round is a hypothetical situation. But I am going to ask you now that if word came out that someone in the GAA was going to do a diss track about you, <laughs> you tell me who the worst person to possibly have a diss track against you and tell me why they would be the worst people to have it. They have to be in the GA now. They have to be circulating around someone who knows your information that is going to do a diss track on you. Who's the last person you would want? And then convince me who I wouldn't want to do a diss track on me. And then I'll lean towards who I wouldn't want. Matthew, I'll go with you first. Aaron went first the last time. One person. Who is the last person I would want to have a diss track of made by them on me? Mm. Tough one. Will we? I have two names in my I, head. I, I I think I've one that uh that you might like. Okay, shoot. Stephen Cluxton because <laughs> firstly, <laughs> firstly, he never he, he never does interviews. He never speaks in in the media. You very rarely ever get anything from him. If he was to come out and say do a diss track about you and let's say you know you're you're you know this the podcast and everything else and he was you know just dropping absolute rhymes and everything else probably would make your life a little bit uncomfortable yeah. you know especially working in in crow park as well and everything else 
Do you know, a Dublin le- a Dublin legend comes out of absolutely nowhere, never does interviews, and here he is, you know, dropping dropping this uh, this track on on Seamus Brady's head. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that might that might cause a bit of damage. That would be fairly scary <laughs> because the one point is there's nobody more professional than him. So I exactly. feel like if he was going to do it, he'd do it right. Mm. That's a very good. That's a very good suggestion, and one that I wouldn't have seen coming because he doesn't have much of a personality. But then, they always say fear the ones that are the quietest. Yeah. Have you got a name, Matthew? I just got a name there. I have to research his name. Uh, Garold Meehan, the singer of Thirty Eight and Counting. Ooh. The reason is because you have dissed that song for <laughs> ages. <laughs> now, I think you, you'd be wanting to go at you saying that uh, Kerry has more all Ireland in Dublin. And I think, considering you work in Dublin's home ground, of course, it's their home ground, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Garrod will be on to you saying that I want to make your life hell going to Crow Park. So I, oh, I think yeah. it was Darren but Stephen Jobson <laughs> definitely would be one as well. That's good because to be fair, I actually have. I don't think Stephen would give a shit about me, but like, I've 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 only ever said anything but nice things about Stephen. Yeah, because yeah, I did kind of laugh at the yeah. irony of putting out a song thirty eight and counting, and then you have to stop the count for at least a year. <laughs> like. I don't know. I feel like I have to give that one to Matthew because, like, there's actually a bit of substance to that. There's actually mm. like a bit, a bit of history there. A bit, not, not, not history. Like, a, a, nothing personal. I just found it funny. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, like, it was one of those that maybe I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bit like, "Oh, will you shut him out?" Like, or something. <laughs> but, like, anyway. Kind of, yeah, makes sense. But uh, it's a good song. It's a good song. Um, so, Aaron, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember 2009 and someone put out a Dublin version of that song before the All-Ireland quarter final? I think so, yeah. Do you remember it kind of went like, Will Hammer, Carey, you know, we want it, Will Hammer, yeah, Carey. Very, very kind of Mayo-esque. Sort yeah, of. It, was, it was one, two, yeah. three, four. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, we hadn't won an All-Ireland since 1995 and we hadn't been in... You know, we hadn't won too many big games because all yeah. you know, I remember the yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of an unusual build up to that game, and then we just got absolutely like yeah, you know, trashed. So they were saying we're gonna annihilate Kerry, and then Kerry tore us limb from limb in one of the most difficult games to watch I've ever experienced in my life. Hmm. Okay. Um so yeah, they're good ones. I'll give the three points to Matthew. The last one, lads, in terms of the debate, and this is before I bring it back to you know, a little bit of a personal touch on the year. Um, so this is the last one. In every championship, in every year, I think that there are turning points where one moment has an effect on the rest of the year. One moment in a game has an effect on the entire year thereafter. If there was one moment that you could pick that shook up the entire championship. Not a result, a moment that shook up the entire championship. What moment would that be? Aaron, I'll start with you, if you have one. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I'm trying to... Like, there's a few I can... Because obviously, if it's results, you're talking Mayo knocking out Galway, you're talking... Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of something a bit more like... Seismic than than just the just the result. Like one that stood out as you were talking about it is when Keen Lynch came on against Galway, or when he when he reappeared, because yeah. Limerick Limerick up until that point in the championship had looked they hadn't like they don't get me wrong they'd still obviously won the Munster championship and everything and they'd you know came back but they'd had a, a couple of early stages early in the year nearly lost to Cork. Had a few ups and downs, lost to Clare, obviously, in the in the Gaelic grounds. And then obviously Declan Hannon's injured. You know, a few players, maybe like Road Hegarty and a few others, maybe weren't at their absolute peak of, of what we expect with Limerick. And then Keen Lynch played and he just he was phenomenal. Like in, in both the Galway and the Kilkenny game, he was absolutely unplayable. Absolutely unplayable. And like I remember speaking to a few people over the Christmas and we were just talking about All-Stars and someone mentioned how did Keen Lynch knock out one. 
And it was basically because of the fact that, you know, it was, I think it was the only two games he started, wasn't it, in the championship or yeah. the entire year? Because he was coming and to come back from such a long term injury as well and still look as good as he is. Like when you think of all the you know, best players or best athletes who've had to come back from major injuries and he would look at what he's come back from and he's looked, you know, he looked even better. So, yeah, that was one that stood out. Yeah, probably I'd, if I had to pick one, I'd go with that one, I, I think. Yeah, that's a very good, uh, very good shout. Matthew? I'm going to go for when Cluxton reappeared against Lout. That's a very because, good one. Mm. Because before, like in the league, Dublin, they looked a bit disorganised in the defence. They looked like they had no leader. They looked like they were plowing along and they weren't really having any substance to their to their run of the league, despite the fact they won Division 2 and they won it comp- comprehensively against Derry. In the Championship, Dublin were a changed team then and Cluxton changed the mentality around the dressing room and even in the all Ireland final. What I will say about this, uh, I know Cluxton only reappeared against the uh, Loud in March, but in the all Ireland final, there was a moment in it where David Clifford and Mike, Fitz- Mike Fitzsimons were having a grapple off the ball. And Mike Fitzsimons, if that was... OK, David O'Hanlon had a very good league campaign and he saved them against Cork and Corky Keefe. But if David O'Hanlon was there at that point, Mick Fitzsimons might have done something stupid to David oh, Clifford. That was Brian that Howard, wasn't it? Mm. It was, it was Brian Howard and Mick Fitzsimons, one of them anyway. And they were in the middle of a, a fight with uh, David Clifford. And Stephen Cluxon actually in, went into it and said, get back, you're going to get sent off here. And I think that saved Dublin. Mm. It really did. Uh, going into the last few stages of the game, Dublin got a bit of confidence going. They won the All-Ireland then. But I will argue, David O'Hanlon might have made some crucial saves. Dublin might have still got to the final if David O'Hanlon was there. But they would not have won the All-Ireland if David O'Hanlon was a goal and Stephen Cluxon was not there. So I think when Stephen Cluxon reappeared against Loud in the dressing rooms in Crow Park that day, I think that was a changing moment in the championship, despite the fact it didn't happen necessarily in the championship. It happened on match day seven of the Allianz League. Yeah, that is very, very hard to pick between the two of them. I personally think... If I'm being honest, I think Limerick might have still won the All Ireland without Keen Lynch. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. Because any time they've had big injuries or any time that they've found a way, like someone, someone else has up, someone else. Like it wouldn't have surprised me if, say, Keen Lynch wasn't available. Then Hegarty just you know I I know he was he was quiet enough in the final and the semi final, but his own sort of standards is what he set in previous years. Wouldn't surprise me if he then stood up. Do you know, like it's a, they are that type of team, so yeah, probably would, probably would understand that to be fair. Um, and then with Dublin, like, yeah, like David O'Hanlon obviously was having a great league campaign, but I think you can't ignore what Cluxton brings off the pitch as well as on the pitch. Yeah. Um, and even look at our record, we can see like we conceded a goal in nearly every game in the league, and then as soon as Cluxton came back in, I think the only goal we conceded in the championship was Kerry. Kane. Kane yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you know, so insane, yeah. insane. I'd I probably would say Cluxton then. Um, so Matthew has taken the quiz. Matthew has <laughs> defended his uh, defended his title on well, a final score of twenty six to seventeen. That last one, the three point questions. Matthew shaded them, and then the couple that he stole from you. In the in this opening round, we're fairly fairly decisive as well. Anytime that you miss one and the other one can other person can take it off you. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick little fun one. Immediate answers. Don't even think about it. It's a quick fire rattle and we'll see. We'll see who uh we'll see who comes out with the funnier answers. So I'll start with you, Matthew. I'm just gonna rattle off five things or six things and then just give me your immediate answer to them so this is all about GAA personalities so who do you think lads you say one each say one each go about at the same time who do we think is the funniest person in the GAA funniest person Mm, probably Joe Brawley Brawley's pretty good yeah he just comes out get him losing his mind. mind. <laughs> even, even, even looking at his Twitter sometimes, especially when there's a there's a, the, a game the, on. The, the team yeah. where he put up the what in the actual fuck after Mickey Hart went to mm. Derry. 
but even as well when he does them little things like the qu- the quizzes and everything you know the way like RT have their quizzes at half time and then he puts up his own one and it's like yeah like no northerners are like, oh, no, all this crazy stuff um Davey yeah Fitz. Davey, Davey Fitz as well to be fair although Davy Fitz is probably more grumpy and angry and i think maybe that's why he's funny because he's a bit of a loose cannon <laughs> Davy, you know the, 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 the to Davy Fitz. I think Joe Broly probably tries to be funny, but Davy Fitz just is funny because he's just a bit of a lunatic. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He doesn't <laughs> he doesn't intend on being funny, but he, he's just a bit of a madman, like clashing into players yeah. on the sidelines and all this crack, you know? Yeah, I think he do. I um I personally like if we're gonna include personalities outside, I find the two Johnnies absolutely hilarious. Like I, I find them genuinely hilarious. Um, if we're talking actually in the game, like person in the game, so Davies comedy gold at protecting all costs. Yeah, I, I completely agree yeah. with that. It's it's just national, funny. national treasure. <laughs> I always found Pat Spillane to be funny as well when he's kind of losing his mind a little bit, and he's just, just... <laughs> yeah. Like the the fact that he went on the commentary for Sligo New York, and he clearly <laughs> enjoyed. New York <laughs> the night before <laughs> as yeah. hungover as I'd ever seen a person be on the job. Yeah, in, I mean all the all the heavy breathing and, and everything else. You're, 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 you're hey. kind of worried for him. <laughs> but uh, thankfully he was all right. Like he was just maybe enjoying the uh enjoying New York. It's a good place to be fair. Yeah. No, I, I probably would say Pat for me. Watching Pat or there's there's some clips of Joe Broly going back and forth with Pat and like just those clips were gold. I think they all make each other a little bit funnier. I probably will say it. If, if there's someone who'll make me laugh, I think Pat probably if we're talking like someone who's like a recognized kind of pundit or voice of opinion in the GAA, I think he's quite funny. Um Matthew, do you have any shouts for this one? Yeah, uh consider we're going for past pundits, I'm gonna go Jordan Nan. Jalen Nan is gone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. just the comment about, about. I think the comment he made about Dublin and Wexford in 2013. I don't know if you remember this. He called Dublin's hurling constipated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's mad. He said that that was in 2013, was it? Oh my yeah, god. Was, no, that was the year we went on to to, to win the Leinster title. Do you know so? Yeah. Kind of mad to think if, if if that's constipated hurling, then you know what are we now? <laughs> Diarrhea hurling or something like that. You know, <laughs> where, where are we now? Like, yeah, if we were winning Leinster titles in in the All Ireland semi final and had a few All Stars back then. Yeah. And actually, actually, um, I don't know. Do you see Connor sketches? I t- he takes he off the likes of Ronnie and all them and Spillane, but the first yeah. person he actually takes off across every um comedic thing is Gerard Man. And he described yeah. actually before May on Dublin's final. He said, I, 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 I know what you're going to expect pure constipated football. <laughs> I remember <laughs> he said so about the hurl, it was before Mayo Galway in 2018. And he was yeah. really impressed. And he was like, The standard of hurling is so bad, even Galway won the All Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Connor Moore is absolutely hilarious, but I don't, is he necessarily in the GA? I wouldn't know. Roy stories as well. Like he has some absolutely golden videos. Um, for me, I I was gonna say, was it Dara O'Donovan after the All Ireland, or was it William O'Donoghue? Dara O'Donovan. Dara O'Donovan. Yeah, like I I remember his interview with Off the Ball and everything, and he was clearly he was a bit like Jack Grealish, like with, with Man City. You know, like it definitely had a few. I can't. I actually can't exactly remember what he said, but it was very funny. I, I watched the interview back. I remember a few times after I first seen it, and it was like, yeah, it was yeah, a he's good one. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely definitely had a few, but he he was chatting mad stuff. I think I remember he was like, um, "I'm sure all uh, all the lads are loving it now. We're having great crack and all this." And yeah, it was a good. It was a good one actually. <laughs> um, I, I have one thing as well. Uh, next one is. Next one on the quick rattle off. So my one funny one is all in the GA, like all across the board, the two Johnnies for me. Take it. If you're saying actual RTE personnel of the past, for me it's Pat. 
Spillane, I think he's absolutely gas. Like the his commentary on the nineteen ninety six brawl between Mayo and Meath is golden. Yeah. Uh, and he, that's a kick that Michael Fatley be jealous of, and all this, all that's like those are cracking lines. Next one is, you're in a bar, and somebody tries to start a bar fight with you. Who in the GA you can take only one person? Who do you want to have your back in that situation? No, O'Leary. No, O'Leary is a shout. No, O'Leary is an absolute animal. On the pitch, off the pitch, he seems like the nicest bloke in the world. But like on the pitch, he was as hard as nails. But Aaron, can you think of anyone? Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, there's a lot of. Not big characters out there. I was nearly even thinking like, yeah. See, I was nearly thinking of a Ford originally because I was like, you know, he doesn't miss. So like, if he has to throw punches or anything like that, I'd probably nearly go for someone like Brian Dewher or one of them. Throw, oh, uh, you know, Oh Mulligan or something like that. Like one of them. I'd probably go for Oh Mulligan because you know what he has the. He has the speed, he has the pace, he has the ferociousness. <laughs> His accuracy was always... I know accuracy in terms of, you know, on a night out might be a little bit different to what you produce on the pitch with a football, but I'd be confident enough now with him around. He's, you know, pretty sure he works, uh, you know, he works in pubs or, or something like that. I think he might own a pub across the across the pond or something like that. So, yeah, I think I'd go for, for Owen Mulligan. Oh, Mulligan is a good shout. I personally would be tempted to go with someone like a Neil McGee. Neil McGee mm. or John Small, maybe, would be a good shout as well. John yeah, Small. I was going to say Philly. Um, I was thinking Philly was man originally. And then I was like, yeah, I was Philly, would be, Philly would be good. Uh, yeah. Another one, Ryan McManaman. He mm. tough enough, quiet enough, but definitely. I think Nolo, I think Nolo Leary for me. I like guess a serious Mick Lyons for me. Good mm. lord. There's a famous quote about Mick Lyons, right? It was said by I think it was a Con Hoolahan. And he said, uh Denise said personally I'd go for Aiden O'Shea. I mean he definitely has the size. Wow. That that name, I'm not gonna lie, when you were saying it first of all, Aiden O'Shea came into my head and I was like, in terms of size, definitely, but it's just the fact that, you know. I'd say, like, especially in Dublin, I'd say everybody would be go- would would want to go for him. Do you know what I mean? So we have to get someone to keep his back as well as keep my back. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think yeah. I'd be the target. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> another one actually is uh, Paul Galvin. Paul Galvin. Paul Galvin is in it. I've I've met Paul Galvin once. He's a, a really quietly intimidating bloke like he's lovely but he's very quietly intimidating like you can tell he's mm. confident in his own ability <laughs> yeah, put it that way. he's not intimidated by anybody um then yeah no so i'd probably go neil mcgee personally no O'Leary is a hell of a shout um the next one is and this is the final one before I ask you just to recap kind of how you would sum up 2023. And this is a funny one. This is very relevant to the main one. A good shout again by Denise said, William O'Donoghue. Yeah. That, I mean, he's tough. You can't lie about that. To be fair, you can nearly pick any of the Limerick lads. They're all, yeah. they're all beasts really, aren't they? You know, Groat Hegarty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe don't not. Go there. No, no, we don't go there. Um. Anyway, so the last one before I ask you to recap your year is very relevant to the present day. Uh, big, big, big shout out to Jason Keelan from the Loaf of Bread GA podcast because I seen his post went up about this. Your tasks, lads, is to tell me what on earth McGregor is saying to Ronaldo in this clip. So the the or in this photo. So the the thing that Jason put up was he captioned it as as if McGregor was that fella in the pub being like, you know, I played minor for Dublin. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so what do we think? Is he is he saying that he played minor for Dublin or is he saying that he used to be a UFC champion or what on earth is he saying? He might be convincing Ronaldo why Diego is worth buying. <laughs> 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 so I think yeah, I think he might be explaining the the whole scenario around Kildare and Dublin and Glenn Ryan's yeah. post match comments going crazy and why Kildare you know are, are trying to throw shade at Dublin all this time. I think he's going he's going into the nitty gritty of it. He's going into the details right there. I think he's trying to tell him, listen, man, you don't know till you're in the stadium. The music actually does affect you when you're in there. Man. <laughs> you'd want to see the big, you'd want to see the big screen. <laughs> Listen, you can't talk about it until you've experienced it yourself. Yeah, but, um, to be fair, I seen uh, I seen Scorpio actually. They had um, they basically put the audio of when Joe Brawley was talking about Sean Kavanagh when um the the whole incident around that, and they just put they just basically voiced that over what McGregor was saying and cut out the original audio, and it was uh yeah, it was very good actually. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, no, but if, like. I think that is gas. Like, say what you want about Connor, but like, <laughs> the, the man can talk for days. And to talk like that to Ronaldo, Ronaldo looked so uncomfortable in that in that situation. But uh, yeah, you know, it just reminded me a lot of like that elf and it's in the pub that's like, oh, I had to give it up because uh, I, I broke my <laughs> broke my knee. <laughs> I broke my knee when I was. When I was fifteen, yeah. and I started drinking a bit much, but I'm telling you, lads, if I had a, if I had a put, if I had a gone for it, I would have made it. Like I'm telling you, yeah. But, it's, like, it's like that thing. Like if I had been able to put the ball in the back of the net, I probably would have been a, a great striker, or a great forward. Great you know? if, 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 only, if, only I, if only I could put the ball over the bar in the back of the net, then I would have, you know, it would have been good. But unfortunately, I just couldn't do that. So yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the Michael Owen commentary. Yeah, literally, like um, squaring off with the apple in his room every day. <laughs> yeah, like all all the technical all the technical ability in the world is not the, the physicality, you know. That's it. <laughs> Lads, before I ask you to wrap this up, I'll actually tell you. You remember I was talking about the two turning points moments of the year, so I have two of them, and uh, just want to have my little input in and see what you think about these moments. The first moment is Paul Murphy blocking Paddy Small's shot and deflecting it into the back of the net in the All-Ireland final. Mm-hmm. That was a big moment because Paul. I don't know if Paddy Small's an original shot would have gone in. Mm. Second moment, sorry, three moments. Second moment is Garrett McKinless' shot being saved by Shane Ryan in the All-Ireland semi-final. I think Derry would have won that game if that shot wasn't saved. Third moment is Shane Walsh missing that free against Armagh. Because if he yeah. scores that goal, we, you know, get out of there with a the result. Um, uh, don't get out in the position that they did. Maybe Monaghan don't get into the All Ireland semi final. Maybe Dublin get, you know, a weird L game in the semi final. Maybe Dublin get taken out in the semi final. Maybe Galway take them out in the semi final. Like whatever yeah. way the championship would have shaped up after that, who knows? Um. So yeah, I think Walsh missing that kick is. And then you could probably trace that back to Kilmacud Crokes. <laughs> Walsh yeah, moving yeah. to Kilmacud last year. Led to him being knackered by the time the championship came around. Not playing his best stuff, missing that free. Yeah, you know. All right. one, another one I was thinking of when you mentioned the Paddy Small goal, I was thinking even Carl Maskell's turnover just before that goal. Yes. Like, because actually, like Kerry, I think we're like four points up at that stage four or five points up and uh, and they were very comfortable as well they obviously had the goal before the end of the first half do you know and like with with that bit more of a cushion like maybe Clifford doesn't miss those opportunities as well maybe because yeah. there's a there's less pressure in those moments so even that Pascal turnover to be fair I think is almost as big as the as big as the goal yeah I think like the honest truth is I picked Dublin to win in like uh, just before the final and in that moment before the goal went in, I was starting to get really nervous. I was starting to think, like, I don't see us coming back from this. I, I don't, like, I just felt like Kerry had an answer for everything we were throwing at them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, it's one of those things that 
it's just rubber the green got the moment paul murphy's block sends it up into the top corner instead of wide like th- those key key moments and dublin got the rubber the green with a couple of them on that day lads it's been a hell of a year and the last one that i'm going to show to you is before it's been an absolutely deadly year for the ga and for us covering it as well like all three of us have you know had some big interviews got some big work done 2024 more of the same if you were to wrap up the year sum it all up in about 30 seconds how would you do it Matthew? i'll go to you first what 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 will people look back on 2023 and say i think they'll look back and say that um, it promised to be a shock year for football in particular but it ended up being probably the most um championship of all championships of dublin and carrying the final like there were so many moments when as you mentioned with galway there with shane Walsh. Missing that free, even Mayo losing the Cork. If they would have yeah. beaten Cork back in the Gaelic grounds, could Mayo have got, got their hands in the Sam for the first time since the 50s? We never know because actually Mayo beat Kerry in Killarney. We, we might forget that, but mm. Mayo did beat them and Kerry might have been lucky. Might have been saved by their rivals to get to the final. So you might think about that as well. In Hurling, I think it was just same old, same old. I think Kabogi, it was just the changing of us with Waterford reaching the final I think it was a brilliant change for Camogie in general and ladies football it probably epitomised that du- Dublin ladies you talk about the Dublin men's being back the Dublin ladies are definitely back as well with that outstanding performance and overall there were some controversies this year there were some disgraceful moments that we want to wipe away like the racial mm-hmm. incident with Eugene and the treatment of referees and all that but overall I think it was an exciting year for GA but there's still a lot to be improved on come 2024 yeah, no, well said. And look, we will do videos talking about the improvements that can be made. I've no doubt about that. So stay tuned for them. Aaron, if you were to sum it all up. Yeah, I'd probably go with something along you know, similar lines. I think like yeah, like I, th- I think maybe when new teams come along, new counties come along, like especially in football and hurling, where for so long over the last 10, 15 years, it kind of has always been the same teams. It has been Dublin Kerry. Tyrone and Omeo haven't won the All Ireland and you know what since the 1950s, but they've always been there, thereabouts. Like they've always been, you know, getting to All Ireland finals. So I think when we're seeing new teams emerge, like Armagh coming back to the pack, Derry, Galway, Roscommon, Loud were looking very good. I think everybody maybe played down the big dogs and everybody slept on the uh, on the big dogs in many ways. And when you yeah. actually look back at the whole championship season even in hurling as well you know limerick were getting wrote off after a you know poor start in munster look what they did i think it was a year really where the the big dogs and the big teams and the big players who we've known who've done it in previous years went on to do it again and even in ladies football similar as well you know like with dublin you know going through a mini drought there and mead obviously being being on top Kerry obviously coming out of you know coming out of the the ashes to win the the league um so yeah i think i think yeah it was really the year where i think we thought there was going to be a lot of surprises but in the end there was actually you know it was actually kind of very predictable actually like you probably could have nearly predicted the all Ireland this time last year Do you know i think most people yeah. said dublin Kerry all Ireland final limerick to win it maybe the ladies football and the camogie you wouldn't have predicted um but i do think in terms of football and hurling i think a lot of people would have predicted that um but yeah, maybe next year, look, I'm all for Dublin winning it again, but maybe it can be a bit exciting and um, who knows, maybe we can beat, um, I don't know, maybe Monaghan in the final or something. Yeah. Very well, like, Look, the honest truth is that if we got Monaghan in the final, I actually wouldn't be really upset if we lost to them. I'd be kind of low-key delighted for Monaghan to win one. Um, like they, yeah. McManus deserves one, Began deserves one, Darren Hughes, Kieran Hughes, they all deserve one. Um. The last thing I'll leave you with, do we think that 2024, very quick and honest answer, do we think 2024 will be better or worse than 2023? Mm. I think it's going to be better. Uh, I'll explain why. Number one, on the football, we've got Mickey Hart managing Derry, Jim McGuinness back with Donegal. Ulster is going to be insanely competitive probably more competitive than it's been in the last 10 years because you have mickey hart <laughs> as Derry boss Derry have been the dominant team now and also they're back-to-back champions brian doher is gonna if brian doher doesn't get a rile out of that Toronto team for that he never will 
And I think mm-hmm. that would be really interesting. Jim McGuinness, Donegal, has flown under the radar ever since. Like, I would say Jim McGuinness was the happiest man in Ireland when Mickey Hart took over as Derry boss because he knew all the media attention would go there instead. Um, you've got Galway have something to prove. Mayo have something to prove as their second year at Max Day. Ross Common have something to prove after losing to Cork. Like, a lot of people would say, ah, oh, well, they still they didn't get through the glass ceiling again. Then you've got Munster. Kerry have a lot to prove. Cork are getting better and better. Then you have, of course, Clare looking to bounce back after relegation. Then in Leinster, Kildare need to back up all the talk about Dublin getting crowd Park, this and that. You should have beaten us last year, so you know, come do it this time. Me, Tolton Cup champions, a lot to prove there. Like, there's a lot. And Dublin could play Mead in the Leinster Championship this year. Like, they could. So there's a lot to come up on. And then the other way, when you look at it, uh, and then Dublin, like, can Dublin go and do it again? James McCarthy's talking about potentially doing 10 in a row. So there's a lot on the line there. The hurling, Limerick are trying to reach immortality. And who can stop them? Like, remember the 2010 Hurling Championship, the drama around Kilkenny trying to do five? We're going to get that again. Only we're going to get a crazy Munster Championship before it as well. Because when mm. Kilkenny had to do 10, they only had to get out past Galway in the Leicester Championship, really. So that would be really, really interesting. Then, in the Camogie, Cork, who are the champions, have just lost their boss. Matthew Toomey's gone. How are they going to manage the transition? Kilkenny have got a new boss. They're going to be different. Galway have got a new boss. They're going to be different. Waterford even have got a new boss. They're going to try to come back stronger. That's going to be really interesting. Dublin, won the ladies get it football? Yes, but Jennifer Dunn's gone to Australia. You know, me, they're going to come back. They have a new coach in. Kerry are going to come back. They're going to try win one before Louise retires. So I think across the board... I think 2024 is actually setting up to be really exciting. Of course, maybe it will just, maybe just Dublin will play Kerry in the final next year and Limerick will coast to a five in a row. But right now, in this moment, I think that, like, I think we've, we've something to look forward to rather than something to think this is going to go badly. Yeah, like, I suppose there's a lot of, there's a lot of storylines. There's a lot of potential yeah. storylines that are brewing in terms of, as you said, um, you know, and you've a lot of very experienced managers. Like you actually don't have too many rookie managers like this year, and especially in Gaelic football. Like you have Jared Brennan, obviously with Loud, um, obviously Raymond Gallagher with Cavan, maybe a few others here and there. But in terms of like the top jobs, you know, like it's not like we've got a new manager coming into Armagh for the first time or anything like that. You've got McGinney's been around the block, Desi Farrell's been around for a while. Um, Jack O'Connor has been around for a while, and even a lot of managers who are into like their two, you know, their second and third year of their management reign. Davy Burke second year with Ross Common, Kevin McStay second year with Mayo, and usually, you know, the first year is all about embedding players in, getting players used to systems, sort of finding your way into the job, and then the second year usually is when you want to kick on. So um, I think the only worry really is just be the fact that football was definitely very pragmatic. I felt last year it's it's too many teams playing the same defensive style. And I don't mind defensive football, but when you've got too many teams playing defensive football, it's just, it kind of does make it a little bit less entertaining. So hopefully like we can see more teams take the shackles off and go for it a bit more um, and, and really get after teams. I think it would just make the game a lot better, a lot more exciting. But in terms of hurling, yeah, like I think hurling last year was, you know, super exciting. I mean, there was so many great games. So um, I think hurling definitely can't get worse, I don't think. Unless Limerick, you know, have an absolute unbelievable year and the other teams, you know, don't show up um, and they just absolutely walk to it. But then again, that that actually rarely happens. They usually do get a lot of tough tests in there. So, um, but yeah, like I think, I think the potential is there definitely for it to be better. But will that come to fruition? I think, I think we'll just have to wait and see. That's it. Matthew, what do you think? Yeah, I'd probably go along the same lines as Aaron with some of the points and directly around um, the teams that are challenging Dublin and Kerry. I honestly think out of the top teams, the only three that play expansive good football are Mayo, Kerry and Dublin. And that's a worry, I think. Yeah. Ross Common keep the ball for long periods and it gets boring. Cork, they're getting to fruition now because Kevin Walsh has come in. And why is Kevin Walsh come in? Pragmatic coach. Galway yeah. didn't play as expansive football as they did the previous year. And their challenger, Armagh, went back to the old ways of defensive football. Jim McGuinness and Mickey Hart are probably the two most defensive 
coaches in Gaelic football are there. Kildare play expansive football, but they throw it away. And that's yeah. that's the honest truth of it. Meath, I think they need to improve a bit more on their Talton Cup win. Monaghan, the same. I, I just think football has gone way too pragmatic now. And the way that some be- teams are thinking to beat Dublin and Kerry, you have to play uh, defensive football. But maybe there could be the other side of it. Maybe sides might be thinking, this didn't work against Dublin or Kerry last year. So don't do it. Don't do it again. You know, Tyrone yeah. tried to play defensive football against Kerry. They got blown out of the water in Crow Park. And um, Mayo, okay, they played um, open expansive football, but they might go back into their defensive shell now after the hammering they got against Dublin. So that is a worry, in my opinion. I think hurling, I think Limerick are probably going to walk it again. I really, I think Clare are the only team that could challenge Limerick. But the problem is with Clare, and they're very likely there in football, they'll complain about the slightest thing. Like, it, despite the fact it's their fault, they get wide after wide after wide, they complain about the referee too much. And don't know if he was that made a very good point on the Sunday game. You need to stop blaming other people and start blaming yourselves. Clare need to make that step to challenge Limerick. Is there any other che- team that could challenge Limerick? I don't think so. I think Kilkenny were blown out of the water last year. Galway have seemed to get worse under Henry Shifflin. I don't know, it's yeah. a suggestion to me. Cork, I think they have exciting corners, but they don't have the bulk. They don't have strong players. Simple as. I think the best hope for Cork is to use their speedster as well. The likes of Jack O'Connor, the likes of Robbie O'Flynn, to their advantage. And that would mean Patrick Harbour needs to sit on the bench. And I've said this for ages now. Cork need to do something about that. Tipperary, I'm hearing there's some um, you know, drama behind the scenes with Liam Cahill. That's what I'm hearing inside of Tipperary at the moment. So will they challenge? Probably not. Waterford, Davy Fitz, bit of a soap opera there as well. And then you look at Wexford. They went back even further last year. Like Wexford are going to go even back um, even further. But I do think, I think Kawogi. I think it'll be only Cork and Kilkenny because Galway have lost a lot of leaders in that team. The Neve Kilkenny's the Sarah Durbin's all of them. So I think it'll be Cork and Kilkenny. It might get a bit boring. I do think on the positive note, though, I think ladies' football is in a very good state at the moment. Dublin might have won the All Ireland, but as you said, Jennifer Dunn's gone. Kerry want to win the All Ireland for Louise Neve or Hurtig. Galway, you have to look at the Kilcorn Club board players. They have to go out and win an All Ireland when you have to have players that they're, they're disposing. Cork's still a decent players in and around the team. Armadu. Like, um, I'm trying to think, me, they're back in it with um, Shane Connolly there, Kildare, their first year and senior. So I think the ladies football will have a good year next year. The other three codes, I think it could be even worse than this year. I don't want to be pragmatic about this, but I feel it could be even worse before it gets better. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Me personally, I think we're in for a good year in 2024. There's two rules that I'll throw out to you. I'm going to think about it before we do the big pod you know, saying about the changes the GA can make or the or we do the, our content about the changes the GA can make. I think one good idea to stop the pragmatism is, number one, exact same as basketball, no backcourt. So once you go past the halfway line, you can't go back inside your own half. I think that would kind of force teams to, you know, attack a bit more and holding on to the ball then and that winding down the clock is a lot harder to do if you only have one half of the field. And the next step is that I seen this somewhere that it kind of will force teams to push up a bit more is that if a team in their own half drops the ball on the ground and leaves it there for five seconds, like untouched on the ground for five seconds or 10 seconds or something like that, that it's a 21 yard free or a free from the 21 yard line for the team that, you know, dropped the ball. Does it proves that one team didn't come out and play? That they're too much in their own shell? Mm-hmm. Like Rules like that would be interesting to implement. I'd like to see them be given a run in the league and see if the games are more expansive, if they are more risk-taking, which is what we want to see. But I understand why teams try to take the risk out of it because it's not good for their chances of winning if they play risky football. But it entertains the crowd, and at the end of the day, sport is for entertainment. And it has been... An entertaining year. We've had highs, we've had lows, we've had disgraceful moments, and we've had absolutely beautiful moments. And we've done our best to round it up in as good a way as we can. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. Anybody that watched, same to yourselves. Thank you for getting involved in the comments below, especially Denise, all those comments. Um, yeah, until the next one, guys, here on Enclair. 
Have a great New Year's. We'll see you in 2024. Take care.